Welcome to Typebook. We are Chris and Rose, INTJ and INFJ, and we are cataloging a variety of people based on their Jungian psychological types and their MBTI four-letter abbreviations. Today we are taking a look at John Mayer at the request of one of our viewers. Thank you very much. Okay. Three, two, one. Yay. Were you ready for it? Yeah, I was ready for it. Everything that happened was it made perfect sense to a guy like me. If you'd asked somebody from Fairfield, Connecticut, what do you think is going to happen to John? So you go, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was going to hit it so hard that at first people were going to go, great job. And he was never going to stop until he went off the rails. I think you went off the rails though? You used that uh, term? In, in my way, based on, based on what my payload was, I didn't have a drinking problem. I wasn't, um, it was a thinking man's, it was a thinking man's fiasco, right? It was like, and it's a lot harder to explain to somebody. When you're 23 and you begin your life at the top of the chart and you've got that spunk and you go bring on the world and you go, okay, here's a Grammy and here's an audience and you got it. Now, when you invariably do find out that not everything you touch turns to gold, you've got a choice. You either bleed out or you tie off, right? So what's the point at which you tied off? I tied off after I went, all right, dude, uh, you, did, you did a couple interviews where, where you were out of touch and you were b b being a ham and you were basically breakdancing into a ni nitroglycerin plant, right? <laughs> now you don't even have the chance <laughs> that everybody's going to love you ever again. They, they handed me the Playboy interview before it came out and I knew, I, I knew that. I knew. You could have sat down in front of me and said, John, that's not getting printed. But I wanted you to know what would have happened had I not stopped that interview. But do you think they shouldn't have printed that? No, I do think they should have printed it. You just think there's a place for that moment of mercy. Well, uh, you give it to yourself. You give it to yourself. You, know? <laughs> you got to give it to yourself. But, you know. Um... All right, let's stop. Okay. Oh, my word. <laughs> He's so delightfully. He's an interesting filter. one. Mm-hmm. He's very, um, maybe a little bit too confident. Yeah. But then, like, there's no BS as well. Yeah. He's kind of up front. It's yeah, a very like interesting how... combination, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he sort of acknowledges the, I guess, if there are mistakes in his past, but at the same time, he's like, yeah, there they are. I, fine, it's fine. You know, you just move on or whatever. It seems to me very F.I., like he's all about the uh, the growth journey in that self-reflective sort of way. What did he say earlier? What? Nitroglycerine fact. I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's these, I, I don't know, I'm not sure what that reference is. The dress is interesting, too. The pants with the different color patches on them, the jeans jack jean jacket that's not very conventional, and then with the t-shirt underneath. Three, two, one, yeah. In that period of time, I would have rather killed myself than been killed. I was never going to wrap my Corvette around a tree. I was my my high speed crash was an intellectual one. What was the moment where you first thought, okay, this is not what I want to be known for? Oh man. The first time somebody misunderstands you and says you're a womanizer. You don't consider yourself a womanizer? No, no, absolutely not. But when you're crafty and you're clever and you go, well, I'm just going to <laughs> be as strange as they think I am. So, okay, now you're on TMZ and you're playing into the role. You're leaning into the role, right? And, you, and then you lose, number one, you're not playing music anymore. Number two, you're not feeling anything honestly. And number three, you're not saying anything, honestly. You once said you abused the ability to express yourself. Oh, yeah. What's different now? Oh, uh, I know what I want. I don't care if this video gets 500,000 views or 50,000 views or 5,000 views. I'm not out to affect that anymore. That's for me to care about. That's for you to care about, man. Are you susceptible yourself to wanting the Twitter feedback? Yeah. Wanting the approval? Yeah, that's why I pull myself off of it again. I'm a recovered ego addict and the only way that I can that I can be sure that I don't relapse is to admit that I constantly have this ego addiction every day so I do the Grammys and I go home because if I stayed 
I'd get high again. And then and then I'd get high and then I'd get low. High on the approval. Yeah, well, yeah. You've already looked through Twitter, everybody goes, it's great. And then you're low again because oh, stop. you can't stop looking. Okay. This is strangely reminiscent of the Jewel interview. There's this like, you know, recognizing that when I'm honest and authentic, that's when I'm at my best. Interesting. I was sort of thinking Russell Brand. On the surface, they look quite different, I think. But underneath, they're sort of the same. Problems with drugs, potentially. You know, they both know what they're like. Now, Russell Brand's a bit more feelerish, eccentric, maybe. Mm -hmm. And this guy's a bit more... Well, he referred to himself as an... I think, did he say intellectual thinker? He may have used that term. He did say something like that, didn't he? Mm hmm Yes. He's just a bit more, like, conventionally masculine, could you say? So Russell Brand, you think, has more of a feminine energy. Is that what you're saying? He does. Yeah, he does. He's just got, like, a bit more of, like, a... a feel a man's look to him yes. as in like what like mm -hmm. a think a woman would like you know like the open top chest hair thing and he's got like <laughs> long hair and he's like he's like the think a woman's womanizer <laughs> yes. you know yes he's a bit more approachable this guy's a bit more like a feel a woman's womanizer mm -hmm. even though he said he was not was there a picture of him with Jennifer Aniston? Was that in there? I don't know. Yeah. He was with her for a while. Yeah, he, he broke up with her. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you're wrong. Maybe he is the thinker woman's man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But he's, still, he's still an ENFP, but there's a... I think with all women, they prefer the more feel a look. And I'm mm -hmm. talk, not talking about type. I'm talking about like they like the feel a look or they like the more thinker look. This guy's yes. got the more thinker look, even though he is yeah. a feeler. Does that make sense? Yes. Or you could just yeah. say, you know, more manly men or more unconventional men, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you'd put it. Politically correct. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Or you get you get low because you read the one negative thing. So I'm a recovered ego addict. Like this is not the first outfit I put on today. I'm admitting that because that's my AA for being an egomaniac. Are you going to check Twitter after this interview? I will not check Twitter, but I checked the mirror, the original Twitter, the mirror. I checked my mentions in the glass. How has this changed since you broke? There's new technology now. Yeah. There's instant feedback now. Right. The technology that I think I'm, I'm confident enough to say is hurting music is that musicians okay, are, again. are very self-conscious. He's got an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. He's thought about all of this. He's got an opinion on it all. Which to me indicates that he's an FI type, like he's introspected on, on all of these things. Also, you said they're saying like he's a narcissist in the comments. Yeah, they're all in the comments, everyone's saying that he's narcissistic, yeah. This seems to be a bit of a thing, because whenever you get someone who's like overly confident who admits it, they say they're a narcissist. But that's like... The antithesis of a narcissist. Yeah, well, one of them said he's a self-aware narcissist, which made yeah, me laugh pretty hell? hard. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, not a narcissist. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned changing his outfit. But you just look at his outfit. It's interesting. It's the pants with the different color knee patches, the jean jacket. That's not like a normal jean jacket, the t-shirt underneath. Definitely makes a statement, right? His clothes are making a statement. 
Yeah, it's very it's a very any kind of look. Mm-hmm. And you could well describe it as quite neurotic. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Three, two, one, go. This now they're very self-aware. I see people sing and I go, they're hoping they do okay. And they're gonna find out if they do okay. They're looking for the feedback. They're singing whilst judging. They're performing for the Twitter mentions. They're just hoping that, that when they get in the car on the way to dinner, they're gonna, their face is lit up and they're checking to see if they did okay. I could go on a sermon if I wanted to, but I just don't know how old fart it would sound. I just don't want to call BS on things that aren't for me. <laughs> you, you have two choices. You can look at Sam Smith and you can say, you can be all cynical and go, well, I knew Sam Smith when it was that. You go, yeah, but they don't. Are like you Sam implying Smith. that Sam Smith is trainer wheels for people who haven't heard no, that kind of no, song? No, no, I don't. I mean, it, but, it, but if you wanted to be cynical, you could listen to it and go, oh, I've heard that when it was X, Y, and Z or something. And I'm kind of picking the guy out of a hat because I, I like Sam Smith. And I would use Sam Smith as, as an example for so many great things. I go, oh, well, that, they're doing that again. Like, that's been done. But you go, wait, don't hold your age against other people. You know what I mean? Because it's the first time they've ever gone, da 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 ba da 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 And they go, wow, I've never heard someone sing like that. You go, have it. I want you to have it. You think it's getting worse to Yeah, because there's yourself. nobody to tell you what to do anymore. Artists overthrew the record company heads, and the record company heads cannot tell an artist when to put a single up on their own, you know, on their, you know, they put a clip on of your SoundCloud. song on Instagram, yeah. SoundCloud. And they can and, say whatever they want. And they can say whatever they, they want, anytime they want. There's no checks and balances. And how's technology changing that? When you look at, say, Taylor Swift coming out and saying, and I'm talking about Taylor Swift professionally you ha here. We have to be able to talk <laughs> about Taylor Swift professionally. <laughs> yeah. We have to be able to, to so, talk about so Taylor Swift. So tell me about that. When she comes out and says, I'm not putting it on Spotify. Right. That doesn't respect the, the artists and the writers enough. I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. Uh, artists need the person with the loudest voice to speak for them. And Is she doing that? I think so when you say that. Well, you can go to the Met Ball. You know, that's great. It's a great way to use your voice. You go, I'm wearing Valentino. Or you can use your voice to give things. Well, now, some people, the cynical, could say you're helping yourself, but it's trickle down. You're not saying I want this just for me. Okay, I think stop. that's. I think it's a very different one because he's so assertive. Interesting. He said, I don't want to call BS on something that's not for me. Such an FI statement right there. Yes, that's fair. If you don't like it, it's not for you. It's it's not where you're placed to criticize in a way. It seems a lot of his opinions are mostly reserved for himself. As in like he doesn't want to he doesn't want to share because there's no point. Oh, because... a lot of his no, a lot of his criticisms are aimed at himself. Or things. Like the music industry. Right. Which, you know, isn't anybody in particular, is it? It's more of a system than anything personal. So what makes him different, do you think, from some of the other ENFP males that we've had a look at? Like he's kind of brash, I think. He's... Very assertive, no nonsense. He feels a lot less feelerish than the rest. You know, if I think of like Eddie Redmayne or Russell Brand, they're more feelerish and boyish. You know, they're more conventionally squirrely. And now he is as well, but mm -hmm. it's just different. He's very, like, not boyish in it. If that makes sense. Much more assertive in it. Much more no-nonsense. Much more T.E. We talk a lot about the circumstantial, and you wonder, you know, how much of this has to do with your upbringing, you know, your childhood. So his father, interestingly enough, was a high school principal, and his mother was an English teacher. Yeah. So, 
that's you can kind of imagine that environment growing up in right i mean he's almost you could see how perhaps he's been very funneled into like right knuckle down this is your career you're going to be something i mean clearly he's believed that right well his parents didn't want him to be i mean they were dissuading him it said from being a singer Ah. Uh. Obviously, right? I mean, well, he they... said, "What did he say?" That people in high school would say, "Oh yeah, John May is going to go somewhere." So yeah. Obviously, he's done well. He's made a presence in the school, probably by being a little out there, very confident, very assertive, like he is. And then, of course, I wouldn't say, "Oh yeah, here do something cool. Here get somewhere." Mm-hmm. And now he's saying it. Yeah. And starting with that at that point of the interview does make him seem a little bit egotistical. But now that you've watched more, you can kind of see that he's just being real. Because I believe him, you know? Mm -hmm. I think they would have said that. And I can see why now. Very academically tapered. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Get good grades, do this. The teacher thing, so to speak, has been hammered into him, obviously. Which means he's like he is. He's been made to be more driven as an ENFP, I think. And you don't you don't get that with Russell Brand. Not at all. He's a bit more loose. <laughs> I read a lot of things that he said. It's definitely an EFI. I mean, I won't read some of them, but you can go look on your own. But <laughs> Yeah, he said some out there sort of things. We talked about this too before. I think we mentioned it in the Maynard James Keenan interview. I think we compared him to Jack Black because he was making a few statements and we said it lacked the intuitive weirdness. Like he, he right. made a few statements and we pointed it out and it's it's kind of the same here. If you look at some of the statements that John Mayer said, which I'm not going to read <laughs> for obvious reasons, you can see they're along the lines of the Jack Black kind of statements. Like they Whispers are way... of darkness, huh? You know, that's what Jack Black said about Neil Peart. Right. There's just this N-E-F-I say whatever comes out of my mouth and damn the consequences, kind of. I'm just going to say it because I want to. To support our project, please comment, like, and subscribe. We want to encourage a dialogue in the comments, so substantiated disagreement is welcome. Check out the playlist for this type and our recommended video below. If there's someone you want us to type, please leave a comment for us. Or you can look into our fast track system to find out how you can get your favorite people typed sooner.